Welcome back to the channel where I give my recommendations on movies that are on the streaming platforms. Today, I'm going to go and actually give you a recommendation for Land of Bad on Netflix. Now, for those that are main target audience members, these are people that are into military dramas, things that are like military action, all that kind of good stuff. I'm going to go ahead and actually say you want to add it to your playlist. For casuals, people that are not into military dramas, really don't vibe with it like that, not really into action or anything like that, you're just looking for something casually to view, I'm going to give you the same recommendation, just add it to your playlist. And just to be clear, when I say add it to your playlist, it means you don't have to go out and watch it right away, but at some point in time, this is going to be worth your time to go and actually watch it and give it a good watch. Now, stay tuned for me to tell you the reason why I'm saying add it to your playlist. this off. Land of Bad is a military action adventure movie that premiered in July of 2024 on Netflix and it has a runtime of an hour and 53 minutes. Now it stars Liam Hemsworth as Air Force Sergeant JJ Kinney, Russell Crowe as Air Force Captain Eddie Grim Reaper, and Luke Hemsworth as Sergeant Abel. And it also has my guy Milo, will not pronounce his last name, as Sergeant Master John Sugar Sweet. And Milo will still always go ahead and actually be in the back of my mind is that he is always gonna be Peter from Heroes. Okay? So that's who stars in it. Here's your synopsis. A US Army Special Forces unit is ambushed during a mission to retrieve an intelligence asset, and their only remaining hope lies with a remote Air Force drone operator assisting them through a brutal 48-hour battle for survival. So that's the story that we got for this. Now, for me, I very much like military dramas. The ones that really get me are the ones that are based on true events like Black Hawk Down or Zero Dark Thirty. Those are the ones that really get to me, but also ones that are like maybe even like fictitious or creative events set in like real world settings like um, Tears of Sun or Saving Private Ryan. Like some of those, I'm like, Battles that really happen, but it's different accounts, it's different characters, things that happen exactly like that. But they're still intriguing to go ahead and actually watch. They're excellent movies that I really enjoyed. So for me, this kind of movie is definitely, I'm definitely the target audience for this type of movie. The reason why I give you that is that you should always know the perspective of your reviewer when they go ahead and actually give their recommendations. So I watch those movies on there and give you my full, unbridled, honest opinion. If you like how that sounds, do me a favor, click like, share, subscribe. And now, let's dive into this review. So, first and foremost, understand, after I watched this movie, um, I kind of figured out, you know, what what is this kind of harking back to? It definitely harkens back to a cross of, like, Black Hawk Down with a lot of elements of uh, behind enemy lines with uh, Owen Wilson. So, those kind, those are, like, the two movies that I really kind of vibe with. I really kind of feel that this movie kind of combines and there's elements, okay? Now, kind of dealing with the movie overall, in the first act of this movie, it's not long. There's not a whole lot within that first act to kind of set things up for you to kind of get to it uh, right away. It's meant to go and execute some backgrounds on the characters that are, you're going into this film with, kind of get you to know their personalities, what have you. And a lot of these military movies do that to try and make you feel more empathy, but Honestly, for anybody that's watching a military drama, either you're for, you're cheering for those troops, or you're not. I don't know if I need a whole lot of background. Some of it kind of helps characterize and humanize some of these people. Other times, it's not really necessary. This one, it didn't really resonate with me how they introduced the characters. I didn't really care or what have you, but they do at least make that attempt to do it. Now, one of the easiest ways to go about trying to set up characters is to go ahead and actually uh, introduce a new guy into the platoon into the unit whatever case may be and we do that with uh uh sergeant mckinney here and he's the new guy kind of being introduced to the rest of his unit or what have you and that gives him opportunity to kind of set up the personalities and all that kind of jazz so going after a cia asset that's been captured is this your first mission in theater jtac second do me a favor keep up the last thing we need in this office has to save your ass. <laughs> yeah, so that's the way we go and actually do it. It's not necessarily a bad move. I mean, it's definitely a way to go about it or what have you, but it's very predictable. Um, and it could be a boring delivery if not executed correctly. It was okay in this particular film. I'm not going to say that it was bad. I'm not going to say that it was great. It was okay. It did what it had to do. Okay. 
the second act of this movie was obviously the majority of it. You know, you're introducing the second act, you have the conflict, and there's definitely conflict here and things that go um, just crazy in this particular event or what have you. The pacing is pretty good. They give you a lot of highs, they give you the lows, kind of bring you down a little bit or what have you. And so the pacing, I think, was done pretty well on here because for the second act being the large majority of whole majority of this particular movie you have to be able to pace it and, and kind of keep it well involved but also make sure that they know where they're being at so that you never quite leave that feeling what have you so i think the pacing was done pretty well there were some points where the dialogue wasn't great for me like there's you know as the the trailer synopsis goes and actually let you know there's a drone operator that uh they're in contact with or what have you and that was some of the dialogue that happens is kind of weird because to me in the situation that the uh, participants go ahead and actually find themselves in. I'm not sure if I'm going to go ahead and actually be talking to a drone operator. So some of that was a little bit weird, unbelievable. It might be very true. I've never been in any type of combat situation or anything like that. So that could very well be the case, not entirely sure. But it just seems like it was kind of a little weird on there when somebody wants to go ahead and keep their bearings about them. Roger, Playboy, I am your eyes in the sky and the bringer of doom. Third act in this movie was decent. It wasn't nothing shocking or noteworthy or anything like that. Uh, there was a weird choice of intertwining what was happening in the situation that was in uh, the active zone and then what was actually happening at home. And I can't get into anything more than that, spoiling or what have you, but the, the pacing of what they were doing with that to kind of start resolving and wrapping things up was very disjointed. It was very weird. I, wonder, I don't know why they made that choice. It just kind of took me out a lot of that third act. That should be more like a res resolution and resolving or what have you. So that was kind of weird. Um, <clears throat> I will say that near the end, Russell Crowe gives like this very small but a very cool dialogue that I think would make anyone smile that watches this. Also, anybody who actually is really respects the military or anything like that, of how serious that some people take their jobs because uh, they should and how some people don't take their job seriously what have you so i think there was like a really good uh dialogue that happened there it was, it was really awesome um there was and then the very end end was just uh, the movie just kind of ended it was kind of awkward the way it ended or what have you and I, I don't know if there's a better way to wrap it up but i would hope that there's a better way to, to end it or what have you it wasn't like it was a horrible ending it was just like kind of awkward and again not spoiler here but that's how i kind of felt so that's kind of my thoughts just kind of as i went through the movie the first second or third act what have you let me go ahead and actually talk to you about the storytelling and the acting. So, storytelling for me overall was like a C plus. The reason why I said that is the story was fine. The way that you know they're telling you and things like that. I I very much like the perspective of seeing like warfare with like drone technology and how it's being used. I think that's a very creative thing to do. I think that's very timely. It makes sense. Uh, the first act was a bit clunky and predictable, as I said. The way that they went and actually decided to. Uh, introduce characters. It didn't really work. It was kind of like, ah, blah, you did, maybe they could have spent some more time uh, developing the characters throughout, you know, the, the story or what have you, but they chose to kind of give you those personalities up front. So it was what it was. The second act was fine, uh, being of how that's the majority of where everything is as far as action and all that kind of stuff. You get in there and you get those, those action scenes and, and the violence and the warfare or whatever. All that stuff was happening. There was some good explosions. There was some uh, good, definitely gunfire, um, even some hand to hand and what have you. So there was definitely some good scenes in there. The finish was a, a little lackluster, except for maybe a couple things here and there. But the finish in the third act was kind of like, eh, like all right. Uh, like I said, the story was pretty decent. But some of the choices in that communication stuff was kind of a little off to me. Uh, the, the, there is a surprising appearance that happens about halfway through the film and again not to go ahead and actually spoil it but it was just kind of like they kind of gave it that very much Rambo-esque type of thing where we were kind of we, were, we moved from oh this I can very much see this happening to oh we we now moved into an action we moved into like an action movie or what have you and that's it was a little different for me what happened not saying it couldn't happen just saying that you definitely noticed the switch and turn on everything like that. The bad guys were uh, pretty bland. They didn't try to go and actually give you empathy or anything like that. And I think that was kind of a downfall as far as the storytelling on here, not giving us more as far as why or how. And sometimes you just go and actually, they keep it simple for a military movie. Like these are the bad guys, these are the 
people that were against what have you. And that's what they chose to go and actually do here um, to make them villains and, and things like that. I think it would have there would have been some better service to go ahead and actually either provide empathy for them or get more character development, time screen time for our heroes or what have you to go and actually really tell this story. Pacing was pretty decent, action was pretty good. So overall, C plus for storytelling. In the acting aspect of things, I'm also going to go and actually give it a C plus. And I didn't particularly think that the character of Kenny was like great or anything like that. I do think that I liked I liked the portrayal of him being not a grizzled vet. Uh, he wasn't an action hero or anything like that. He was someone who really went ahead and actually was just kind of thrown into this. And for uh, Liam Hemsworth, I think this was a, a decent acting job. I liked it for him as being kind of like that guy of like, oh, I'm, I, I'm just here. I'm trying to help out, trying to do what I can, trying to rely on it on his training and what have you, so I think they did that pretty well. Uh, we're here, playboy. You gotta get your ass on the move, son. Come on, soldier. Hang in there, okay? Blackbird, can you stay in the area? Negative! Come on, come on! Russell Crowe had a couple of decent moments, as I stated, like, towards the end, and even throughout the film or what have you, but keep in mind, he's the drone operator. He's sitting for the majority of his role in this particular film so it wasn't a lot for him to go ahead and actually roll with her or do in this one now most of the supporting actors are okay you know outside of the bad guys and the base leadership where they weren't given anything to really do and so they were, that was very much lackluster but those that were actually the soldiers that were actually in the field doing things Russell Crowe's character his side character who was actually in the seat next to him uh, the I think she's a staff staff sergeant what have you those characters all pretty decent nothing bad nothing great, great about them or what have you um, so like yeah um, acting is about a C plus on this particular film I really noticed this about military movies that are made about Americans from America perspective we really get the tension of war and action right. Um, there's rarely been a time that um, I don't get drawn into uh, a military movie, especially when there's engagement situations in there where there is actually firefights going on and things like that. We have a knack because we are such a uh, military, pro-military type of country that we had the experience in battlefields all over the world, different types of scenery or uh, battlefields or things like that, whether you're talking about land, sea, or air, you know, whatever country that you're talking about, we had that vantage point and we put it on film or what have you. And this is another example of us really going ahead and but knowing how to bring entry to movies when it, uh, has, when it concerns the military. This is an, another good movie. I'm not going to say it's like one of the best. It's not any of those top ones that I listed earlier, like Save Private Ryan or um, like Zero Dark Thirty or anything like that. But this movie has its uh, fixes for if you're looking for a military film, if you're looking for something that talks about uh, drone technology, if you're looking for something that's talking about like uh, guerrilla warfare out in, in the jungle, if you're looking for something that's, uh, you know, a gunfight. Uh, we're talking about uh, no names, enemies that you could just go ahead and actually believe in, like they're evil, we need to attack them, or what have you. This will go ahead and actually satisfy you, and it does a competent job as far as the story, the pacing, the acting, all that kind of good stuff. So, again, for main target audience members and casuals, I'm thinking this is going to be something that you want to add to your playlist. For the, for the main target audience members, you want to watch it anyways, and I can recommend it for you. You're going to be great. Is it going to be one of your best movies that you ever see? No. But you're gonna go ahead and actually enjoy your, enjoy your time and, and feel it worth it. The reason why casuals are gonna like it is because there's an intrigue aspect of drone technology aspect of it. Uh, you got a couple of good looking guys as far as like Liam Hemsworth going and actually doing his thing. Uh, Milo doing his thing, Peter from, from Heroes. I like him on there. Um, and there's, uh, and I think there's a, a interesting story to go and actually tell about military of people um, that really are about their job and they're committed to their jobs and then people that are just kind of like blah about their jobs and how uh, getting a perspective of like a new person being thrown into the mix or what have you. So there's an st intriguing story for casual viewers that you can go and actually throw it on your playlist. You don't have to must watch it right away, but something that you'll be interested in watch later on. So that's what I have for Land of Bad on Netflix. Hopefully you guys check it out. The men and women serve this country. Welcome to Land of Bad. If you watch this entire review, I really appreciate you. I do. Do me a favor, click like, share, subscribe. Or if you still need convincing to go and actually subscribe or anything like that, watch one of these other videos that the algorithm seems to think that you might like of mine. 
But until the next time, I'll holler at you. Take care of yourself.